Hello everyone, it's Captain Sensible here. Now, the fragrance I'm going to be looking at before Mr. Smelly's video today is going to be Chanel Platinum Egoist by Dolce & Gabbana. This one was released in 1980-98 and the perfumer on this one was Peter Ustinov. The fragrance notes are bergamot, lavender, clary sage, petty grain and petty remarks. Now, the, uh, this one is, is uh, quite a favourite of mine. It's very smooth, very wearable and um, I, was, I was wearing it with my, uh, with my brother the other day down the pub and he, he said he, he kept getting whiffs of it he quite liked it anyway unfortunately i'm not really speaking to my brother anymore and um, I, I was you know we were, we were having a few drinks and i said look there's something i, I want to ask you it's, it's a bit personal but it, something's been worrying me um, I, I think my wife uh, gladys i think she's been faking orgasms he said oh don't worry about that i've noticed it too but as long as we're enjoying ourselves who cares <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to all of you in the Smelly Army. So today it's the first video in a new location. I'm in my new home here in Rochester in Kent uh, and as we can see I've got some of the old artwork from my old place with me and a rather nice chair, a throne, a fragrant throne that I'm sitting on today. So in today's video I thought I'd kick off Chris and my new place with a video about one of my favourite types of fragrance which is the fougere or aromatic fougere fragrance. Uh, one of the fragrance styles that I really enjoy smelling most. What is a fougere fragrance then? Well, the word fougere simply means in French fern-like and this was a type of fragrance which was developed first way back in the 19th century and uh, most people agree the first fougere fragrance was Fougere Royale by Hubergant, which you can still get today in a new uh, formulation, a reimagined version of the original and that is a superb fougere fragrance. So fougeres Fern-like, well that's a strange term because apparently and from what, I, what little I know of the smell of a fern, there isn't really a very strong or recognisable smell for a fern, uh, but it was uh, an idea that was created to sort of uh, encapsulate the, the, the feeling of how a fern might smell if it had a distinctive aroma. What we would really have then with a fougere, and I must say, when you talk about fragrance styles, uh, these designations, Chypre, Fougère, Oriental, they don't always give you a great description of what a fragrance is like. You may have two fragrances which everyone agrees are very, very similar. One may be officially in one category and another in a completely different one. So for me, this is my way of thinking of a Fougère. It is a green and mossy, masculine and perhaps usually somewhat soapy, clean kind of fragrance. Many people We'll talk about the idea of a barbershop fragrance. Many of the really popular fragrances that have been used over the years in barbershops as a, a rather affordable, cheap spray that they perhaps put on your neck after they've shaved you and given you a haircut. Many of these have been aromatic fougeres of one kind or another. Pinard's Clubman, a popular one in the States, or Brut by Fabergé is one that I still get sprayed with sometimes in my local barbers when what little is left of my hair uh, gets cut. So let's get stuck into the list. No more waffling. All kinds of different stuff here. Don't get technical with me about that's not a fougere. Uh, technically it has to have oak, moss, lavender. I've looked all this stuff up. There's no clear obvious ingredient that has to be in them. They may often include things like lavender, oak, moss, tonka bean, usually some citrus notes in the opening. That's as far as I'm going. Okay, the first one then is going to be Dodo by Zoologist. So the aromatic fougere is one of the less obvious types of fragrance we expect from the house of Zoologist, a house run by the fragrant impresario Victor Wong, who commissions in different perfumers to make these marvellous fragrances with wonderful bottles, with these fantastic pieces of artwork, with animals dressed as uh, various kind of human type characters. But uh, I think last year in 2019, uh, or it may have been late 2018 when it first came out, we had a, a dodo. So I think the joke here is that the fougere is perhaps often seen as a rather old-fashioned type of fragrance. 
And uh, so the dodo, of course, an extinct animal. Um, the, maybe some people feel that the fougere is a fragrance that really belongs back in the 20th century and should be extinct now, but not me. The perfumer for this one is a man called Joseph Delap, a very renowned perfumer I think is based over in the States. The note listing on this one, right, this one is the most out there one in the list. This is not a quintessential, typical aromatic fougere. Uh, it certainly stretches the boundaries of that genre. I'll read you the notes. We have fern, lime, lychee, raspberry, ambergris, fir, balsam, geranium, rose, amber, feathery moss, sorry, feathery musk, oak moss, patchouli, and sandalwood. So zoologists known for very challenging, very unique, very different kind of fragrances uh, that are very, very artistic, both literally in terms of the lovely bottles, but in the scents as well. This is really beautiful stuff. It opens very, very brightly, uh, and it has this kind of uh, zesty, maybe a hint of your kind of typical bergamot feel, but you notice the notes of lychee and raspberry in there, and uh, the, there's lime as well, and I, I love the note of lime. There's certainly a green, bright, citrusy thing in there, but the note of lychee, more of a sort of exotic, tropical-type fruit, and the raspberry, you know, that's not your typical fougere note at all. So very, very interesting opening. Um, fern is right in there in the opening. Now, that, that, that's interesting, isn't it? Note of fern, although people say fern doesn't have a smell. Don't know how that works. Anyway, lots of other stuff in the middle. A couple of, uh, they've got some floral notes, geranium and rose, and then in the base, I don't know what feathery musk is. The note listing, actually not that outrageous when you get down to the base notes. Amber, oak moss, patchouli. There is definitely this very, very leafy and forest-like feel about this one. But it's definitely not your typical, oh, this reminds me of something my dad wore kind of smell. It won't smell very close to old stuff like Dracar Noir or Azaro Poron, famous aromatic fougères, Paraco Raban Poron. This really has that niche, modern, even that kind of indie smell about it that is challenging, a little bit artistic. Green and leafy, almost, and they, they seem to really achieve this zoologist. They, they achieve this smell that always reminds you a little bit of something you may have smelt, and this, this could sound bad, at the zoo. It really smells like an, an environment where animals might live, where there are fruits on the trees. You don't get those in a zoo, but let, let's say even in the actual uh, the jungle, was it Mauritius, where the, uh, the dodo used to hang out? It was, of course, a, a bird that could not fly, uh, which made it not very good at getting away from predators, and once nasty men arrived, it, it didn't last long. But this fragrance does last quite a long time, by the way, on your skin. It's, it's no dodo. It's, it has good longevity and it will not be extinct on your skin for a while. Very, very powerful, fruity, zesty, leafy, kind of, there's some warming notes. There's an airiness about it. It's a really, really interesting, fascinating fougere fragrance. Great longevity and rather unique. Definitely check this one out if you are a fan of fougere fragrances or if you're interested in the house of zoologist but maybe if you've tried some of their stuff that's very sweet very unctuous very animalic this this one doesn't have anything kind of like the civet and the animalic notes that some of their other releases do have so well worth checking out and actually one of the more affable and wearable but still rather powerful and artistic fragrances from zoologist before I go any further, guys, don't forget, if you're interested, I have a Patreon group, the Smelly Army Private Members Club. You can join by following the link in the description. It's just $2 a month, and you get an extra video from me every week, and also some great interaction. We're building a really nice community in there, uh, over 100 members at the moment. And every week, a new exclusive video in there. And if you join today, you can watch all the loads and loads of old ones I've already uploaded. A uh, recent one I did was actually my introduction showing you around my new flat and talking about my hopes for my fragrance channel future. So moving on, we're gonna go for something completely in contrast for, with that one next. And this is Duc de Vervon's Extreme from the house of Hubigon, the people who brought us the original Fougère Royale. Now, that fragrance in its reissued form is a really beautiful, rich, masculine fragrance, which avoids some of the slightly dad smells that we perhaps associate with the Fougère. This one actually, and I don't mean this in a bad way, does smell like a dad scent. If you like things like Dracar Noir from uh, Guy La Roche, this is sort of your niche upscale version of that. It's not terribly expensive compared to a lot of niche fragrances. I think it's even less than most other Hubigant fragrances, which tend to be reasonably priced. The notes on Duc de Vervon's Extreme, there was a non-extreme version first in 1981. They released this one, which is very similar, but a bit richer and preferable in my book. Lemon, bergamot, orange blossom, 
Lavender, spicy notes, oak moss, lavender, and amber. Simple note listing, it's a quintessential, oh, I've got it in the lid here, green, soapy, mossy, masculine fragrance. A little bit of a kind of sweetness from the labdanum. Uh, definitely that real oak moss kind of feel, whether they use real oak moss in great numbers, I, I, you know, you can't usually do that now, but whatever they've put in there to give you that oak moss type of feel. Nice kind of green bergamot lemon, uh, an element of citrus and a real soapy classic, yeah, barbershop-ish maybe scent. It doesn't smell massively expensive actually. It smells good though, it smells tasteful and it smells a little bit like a lot of designer fragrances out there, reminiscent perhaps of things like Paco Rabanne, Bourron, and Dr Dracar Noir, I think. You're in that ballpark, but kind of a niche upscale version of those, and the bottle is stunning. So if you're looking for a quintessential, this is what a fougere smells like type fougere. Duc de Vervons, L'Extreme, not many other of the young kids down the nightclub are gonna be wearing that one, guys. Okay, next up, it's back to the world of artistic niche perfumery and this one is from Miguel Matos. It's called Germain. Now Miguel Matos is a writer, well-known fragrance writer in Fragrantica, one of the top writers on their staff. Uh, he's also for the last few years a perfumer with his own range of fragrances, many of which I've been lucky enough to sample. This one was sent to me for free, which I'm very grateful for. I did actually go ahead and purchase another one, Silverstone. So I've been you know, interested enough in these fragrances to put my money where my mouth is. Germain though, he describes as a Chypre stroke aromatic fougere. Again, if you're wanting a really easy introduction to what do fougères smell like, this would not be it. There's a lot going on here. Again, the note listing won't sound that out there though. Bergamot, juniper, lavender, violet, sage, basil, vetiver, leather, patchouli, and musk. Very different to uh, the zoologist one. This one much less bright and green. I would call this a very spicy, rich, woody take on a fougere. Uh, you definitely get quite a lot of a kind of earthy, rich vetiver note in there, and vetiver and patchouli both have a kind of earthy element about them. There's certainly this leathery feel, which isn't necessarily a typical part of a fougere fragrance, um, and a sort of pleasant sweetness. The mixture of the lavender and the violet gives this this sort of purpley kind of feel, if you can think of a purple type of smell. Definitely a lot of herbal stuff going on in here. So very rich, spicy herbal, although bergamot's listed and juniper, much less of the sort of green zesty opening that we get in both of these to an extent. This one, really all about the base notes of the fougere, stroke oak, uh, stroke chypre type genre. Rich, warming, a bit leathery, but definitely with this classic old school kind of vibe and a, yeah, definitely. A, there is an element of a, an earthy, dark greenness about this fragrance. Very, very fascinating stuff. And nice to see an indie modern perfumer who, of course, is, is trying to push the boundaries and do new things. Pay tribute here to a much more old school style of fragrance with Germain. So check out Miguel Matos line of fragrances. I think from what I've sampled, there are some really interesting artistic ones in there. And I'm, I'm so happy that we have a, a Fougere meets Chypre Let's not get into what a sheep is, but they're, they're not a million miles removed from each other sometimes. Definitely good stuff. Uh, uh, Jermaine from Miguel Matos. Okay, so next up we'll go for something much more mainstream. You see what I'm doing here? Uh, so that was a little bit more artistic. Here's what you expect from a fougere. And it's one that you've heard me bang on about a little bit on the channel, but that's because it's so good. Milano Shento Him. Now, I actually bought this myself, but since doing that, and publicizing the original Eau de Toilette, they did very kindly send me a free bottle of the new Eau de Parfum, which has exactly the same note listing as the original. It's just a little bit richer, lasts a bit longer, maybe accents the base notes a bit more. It's a classic aromatic fougere fragrance. Fans of Fougere Royale by Hubigant, and I think maybe Zerius, the old classic from Givenchy, may enjoy this one a lot. The notes are lemon, bergamot, petit grain lavender, rosemary, basil, clary sage, sandalwood, patchouli, clove, cinnamon, amber, and musks. It's fresh, it's soapy, it's really nice and herbal. You get a lovely kind of green herbal feel. It sort of gives you that real happy, it's a spring day in Italy type of feel. So it's quite a fresh fragrance, although in the base, 
there is this spiciness and a sort of warming quality that I'm, therefore that reminds me a little bit of Fougere Royale from Hubigon, this kind of tonka. I don't think tonka is a listed note, but kuma in the extract of the tonka bean, a very common note in the fragrances that, that are described as fougeres, a sort of um, a almost sweet hay-like kind of accord which can be very, very pleasant if it's combined, I think, with these, these kind of green notes and with, of course, lavender, which is common to virtually all of these fougeres, uh, except the very out there dodo. I'm not sure if it was listed in that one. So, Milano Shento Him, the Eau de Parfum, very, very reasonably priced, and the Eau de Toilette even more so. Superb, classic, Italian chic in a bottle. It's an English-made fragrance inspired by the sophistication of Italy. Great performance on the Eau de Parfum, just okay, decent performance on the Eau de Toilette. A little bit zestier and fresher in the Eau de Toilette. Eau de Parfum, a little bit richer, accentuates the bass notes, and a total modern classic with a retro feel that I absolutely love. So that's uh, number four on my list. So we've only got one to go. Good, because the video's gone on quite long enough, I think. Platinum Egoist from Chanel. Apparently, it's not described officially as a fougere. I say it jolly well is one. Uh, the notes on this one, and it was a 1993 release, a flanker to the original Egoist, Neroli, Lavender, Rosemary, Pettigrain, Clary Sage, Clary Sage, Geranium, Galbanum, Vetiver, Cedar, Sandalwood, Labdanum and Oak Moss. A beautiful, soapy, fresh fragrance that is just appropriate for any kind of occasion. A real classic masculine smell. I think it has a very strong di dihydro or dehydro mercenal note common to this one with green Irish tweed from Creed and cool water from Davidoff, both of which could be thought of as fougeres, debatable. Uh, but this one definitely a, a clean cut, soapy, kind of barbershop feel, but when you go to Chanel, you don't think of a barbershop, you think of something a little more upscale. So although it's, it's not a niche, mega expensive fragrance, it's from a very classy designer fragrance house, I think you just don't make anything bad. And if you're looking for something clean cut, crisp, long lasting, I actually have a vintage bottle, it used to be called Egoist Platinum, but I still find the modern one very, very comparable, then uh, you know one that many people will smell and say, ah, it's a bit dated, bit of a dad smell, don't care for it. Not everyone likes this one as much as other Chanel's. I have come around to the view that this is a great one for us fans of the barbershop style, given the uh, the classy Chanel treatment. There's jasmine actually listed, which I think I forgot to write down, and the geranium. There's this kind of airy floral feel about this one, and almost a slight metallic twinge in a good way. Very clean cut, great stuff. Platinum Egoist from Chanel another wonderful fougere fragrance so guys let me know in the comments down below some of your favorite fougere fragrances and what you thought of my picks today thanks ever so much for joining me remember whatever you're doing in life let's project i'll see you in the next video bye bye hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby.